The third exotic we got in year six, season one, was the Diamondback, which has been around since the beginning of time, but the devs made some changes. But are they any good? Probably not. Just saying. Let's find out. This is the Diamondback exotic rifle. But what is the Diamondback? Well, it's the exotic version of the 1886 rifle, which all on its own is the rifle with the highest base damage in the game. It's so strong, it can basically do anything a sniper can do. Maybe even better, except you can't put a scope on it. They took that weapon and they gave it a talent called Agonizing Bite. So Diamondback randomly marks an enemy within 20 meters. If no enemies are within 20 meters, it marks the enemy closest to you. So that's one of the changes they made. The whole, if there's there's no enemies within 20 meters thing. Hitting that enemy consumes the mark, guaranteeing a critical hit with damage amplified by 20%. A guaranteed critical hit with damage amplified by 20%. I'm repeating that because those are big words and big promises. This is the only way to get 100% crit chance in the game. The cap is 60 otherwise. And then you get an amp on top of that and then whatever else you build is throwing in there with a weapon that's already at the top of the rifle class. After hitting a mark, all shots fire fired our guaranteed critical hits for five seconds. And then afterwards, a new random enemy is marked or whenever you reload or if you swap the weapon. There we go. So when we hit that, it consumes the mark. Now we have guaranteed crits on anything we hit, as you can see. There's some tips and tricks that you're gonna need around this rifle. We'll get into that in a little bit. So if we look at the mods, you got accuracy, which really isn't that helpful, uh, reload speed and stability, which is helpful. And then critical hit damage. Three out of four mods are good. And then you can't really zoom even though there's some sort of scope on this thing. So there's that. So you can reroll your exotics. I put damage to targets out of cover on mine. I still need to finish optimizing this, but rifle damage and crit damage. And it's got a 4.5 second reload speed and a damage drop off that's it's actually quite aggressive. So the devs made two other changes to this weapon. The other change they did was increase the base damage of this exotic 1886 so that it's greater than the non-exotic version. Seriously, devs? And that's supposed to do what? They also gave it more rounds, which in this case we have eight and the non-exotic version only has five. And I think that's my favorite change of the bunch. Tux, how about you just skip the hubba bubba and tell them how you actually feel about this exotic. So I'm gonna give it to you straight and let you know that the Diamondback is not my favorite. It's just not. It's like way the, down there at the bottom of the list of exotics. But I have one build for this thing that makes it worthy of actually running. And that's what I'm providing you today. Let's get into it. This is my Negotiator's Diamondback build. So Negotiator's is gonna give us 15% crit chance. We're not really using that, but it does come in handy from time to time. Otherwise we get this 20% crit damage. We do want that. And then Hostile Negotiations. So critical hits mark enemies for 20 seconds up to three marks total. 20 seconds is a long time, by the way, for this. So you can mark three targets. When you critically hit a marked enemy, all other marked enemies take 60% of that damage dealt. And then every kill you get, you're gonna get 2% more critical hit damage, stacking up to 20 times, which is 40% more critical hit damage. But I'm running the backpack and the backpack is special because that takes that 60% to 100%. So increase hostile negotiations, damage to additional marked enemies from 60 to 100%. You probably caught this, but let me just tie it together for those who are new to the game. So this weapon is giving you 100% critical hit chance plus amp damage. This is saying any target you shoot with a critical hit will be marked and all damage will be applied to all marked targets at the same time. 100% of that damage coming out of the strongest rifle in the game with its 20% amp damage and all of your guaranteed crit damage on top of that is going to be applied to all enemies at the same time. Why is that important? Why is Negotiators the best build for the Diamondback? Because you only have nine rounds. The 1886, in my opinion, is the best rifle in the game. The non-exotic version, it's only got six rounds. So how come the 1886 is better than the Diamondback, yet the Diamondback has higher base damage and more rounds? Well, the 1886, although it has six rounds, that's six kills, six potential kills. And you can run determined, so you can put six body shot kills, as a matter of fact. And why is it six potential kills? Because the best chest talent for this rifle variant is Headhunter. And that's because the rifle is as strong as a sniper. It can almost do anything a sniper can. We're talking killing an elite with a single shot and chain killing. The Diamondback is gonna require more than one round to kill enemies on its best build, which means you don't have nine kills in the mag. You have more like three. 
four tops. Just depends on how many headshots you get. But that's great. That's why Negotiators is the best for the Diamondback. Now, I know some of you might be thinking Headhunter is best for the Diamondback. It's not. We're going to get into that. You don't want to run Headhunter with Diamondback. Okay, so basically what you want to do is load up on crit damage. So I got weapon damage and crit damage everywhere, basically. So... Here's the backpack with weapon damage and crit damage. The knee pads, weapon damage and crit damage. And I have weapon damage and crit damage on the holster. Not everything's maxed out. I went with the Eagle's Grasp or the Zoo brand set. And I'm running two pieces. So we're getting 15% magazine size because the more ammo, the better. But really the 20% weapon damage. And if I can get that 30% weapon handling, I'd take it too. I'm after that 15% weapon handling there. And then crit damage. And then the second piece is on my chest. I have headshot damage, weapon handling, and crit damage. If I had this my way, I'd probably have crit damage and headshot damage instead of headshot damage and weapon handling. Either way, this works. This works fine. And then braced. This is really important. I've tried them all. I've tried headhunter. I've tried glass cannon. But braced is the best, in my opinion. While in cover, weapon handling is increased by 45%. And then we have all the weapon handling elsewhere, right? So that braced weapon handling isn't going to show up on your stats board. It only shows I have 23% weapon handling. But we have 45% from the chest talent and another 10% coming from gunner when you stand still. So it's about 80% weapon handling, which is darn good. And why do we want all that weapon handling? Well, for one, we only have nine shots. So anything that increases our odds of landing those shots, especially on the head, is something that we need. But more importantly, it's the reload speed. So that's 4.2 seconds with the applied weapon handling. And so I'm gonna show you what this reload looks like. That's with that 70% buff. So without that, it's extremely painful and you feel like you're reloading a lot. What's different about the Diamondback in the normal 1886 is the normal 1886, the reload is slow also, but it's manageable because you can reload after every shot if you want to, or after every kill. So you shoot, kill, reload, shoot, kill, reload, kill, kill, reload, reload. But you don't want to do that with the Diamondback. Why? Because every time you reload, it's going to pick a different target, and that's going to make it hard for you to get your guaranteed crits. So you don't want to reload until you do which means you're gonna be running your mag dry way more with the Diamondback than you would with a normal 1886. Just another downside of this exotic. Debs, where were you on that one? Something they didn't consider when they revamped it. So I'm considering that for you with this build, and that's why we want Brace. The other thing is you don't really need glass cannon. I ran it with glass cannon, and it saves you a round or two here and there. There's no such thing as too much damage. Weapon handling is a waste. But the build is so strong with its guaranteed crits and you already have amplified damage and you're applying that damage to three targets at once, you're fine. What you really need is more shots. What you really need is to cut down on reloads because it's when you're not shooting that the enemy is flanking you and where you end up getting in trouble. Braced works when you're in cover. So you can run and gun with this thing and just pop into cover to reload and then run and gun again. But this weapon does really well from cover. Just play cover to cover. All right, let's look at the stats. 25% crit chance, you wanna minimize that. Okay, so some of that's from Negotiators. It's cool. We have 191% crit damage. It's actually higher. So Negotiators is gonna throw 40% on top of that. So that puts us at 230% crit damage. And then we have 90% headshot damage. When you have a guaranteed crit and you land it on the head, you can actually add your crit hit damage to your headshot damage. And that's what's going to be applied. So that ends up pushing us to 320% when we land it on the head. So you definitely wanna go for those shots, especially when you have targets marked. So that's a, a lot of damage and then it's being amplified. So you're gonna see enemies falling like dominoes and it actually works in legendary, but there is a downside for legendary. Of course there is. And the devs again, didn't consider legendary for this weapon. When it comes to damage though, the weapon's damage, it's guaranteed crits and negotiators and the way I have it set up is actually an amazing build for legendary. But what's not great for legendary is the agonizing bites 20 meter distance. In legendary content, even in the smallest of rooms, you'd be surprised on how many of those enemies are beyond 20 meters. And with this rifle, you do kind of want to play on the deeper end when you have a room full of explosive dudes. And I found in those cases that I wasn't able to get a mark. I can 
shoot the targets, but I wasn't able to mark them, which means I wasn't getting any guaranteed crits. And it's like that in a lot of missions. Think about Roosevelt Island and how deep those enemies are in most of those checkpoints. Think about the Capitol Building Lawn. Think about the entire zoo mission. And how about Tidal Basin? Think about how deep legendary enemies play. That's one of their major advantages. They can launch grenades and send drones from across the map. They can snipe you from across the map. And this weapon will not mark those enemies. And those would be your critical targets. So if you are going to use this in Legendary and it has the damage and the build is set up to do it, you're going to want to be aggressive and you're going to want to play inside 20 meters. And if that's the case, you definitely don't want to run glass cannon. That's for sure. Beware of those explosives. Okay, there's so much to cover. These are all really important points. I want to make sure we're thorough here. So earlier you heard me say the Diamondback isn't good with Headhunter and that's because, well, the 1886 exists. So let me make sure we're clear here. So Headhunter, after killing an enemy with a headshot, your next weapon hit within 30 seconds deals 150% additional damage of that last killing blow. And this is capped at 1,250%, which is huge, right? The deal with Headhunter is that it's so strong, once Headhunter is activated, the rest of your damage on your build is sort of pointless. So if you're running Vigilance, it doesn't need Vigilance anymore. You can crit, but Headhunter doesn't care because it's one shot killing everything anyways. You can amplify it, but Headhunter doesn't care because one bullet is all it takes and you can't kill with less than a single bullet. So once Headhunter is activated, whatever damage talent you have on your weapon is sort of pointless there's exceptions to that but i'm not going to go into all the exceptions but if you pair up the diamond back with headhunter what ends up happening is headhunter is so strong it's all the damage you need on the build you're going to be able to one shot you're going to be able to chain kill with a single bullet yes even on elites as long as you're landing it on the head and then you're going to maintain headhunter but what you're not using are your guaranteed crits anymore and that's the point of the diamond back you're not using that guaranteed crits or the amplify damage because headhunter is already strong enough to one shot kill everything but if you go with the non-exotic version then you can rethink what talent you run so you can run a non-damage talent and non-damage talents are really ideal with headhunter because their benefits integrity is maintained after headhunter is activated for example if you go with preservation which gives you 20 percent armor on kill over five seconds when you get a headshot kill even though headhunter is active and has taken over the responsibility of damage on the build you can continue to kill with headshots and you're going to continue to get preservation or you can use determine and even land those shots on the body which is decreasing your acquisition or your time to kill really adding so much more survivability to your build okay so this is a really good rifle build i put out just to demonstrate so this is a headhunter rifle build i'm not going to go through all the pieces just know it's strong enough either way we got headhunter here okay and then i got the diamond back as you would expect so i'm going to use my sniper rifle to activate headhunter now that it's active i switch over to my rifle and then i can continue with headhunter because headhunter is tied to the build not to the weapon so i can continue and maintain headhunter's chain killing capabilities as long as i'm landing shots in the head with my diamond back but notice i'm not acting activating snakebite snakebite is tied to a target way over there to my left and so i don't need snakebite to one shot kill and there's nothing better than one shot killing you can't half a bullet kill so in other words the base damage of the rifle and the build itself and headhunter of course are so strong as a combination you don't need that damage from snakebite so snakebite just becomes more of a nuisance on this kind of setup basically on a headhunter setup it doesn't provide any utility in fact if we look at what happens when i get that gear guaranteed crit and the amplified damage, I barely get additional damage. And what am I doing with that additional damage? Nothing, because I'm already one shot killing all the elites in my face on heroic. So I'm not getting any value out of snake bite. But the rifle, the base rifle, the 1886, is a good weapon. And the fact that we have more ammo is nice. But look what happens when I switch over to just the non-exotic 1886. And this one has determined. Now I can do the same thing, but I don't even have to shoot the enemy on the head. I can chain kill with body shots. That makes everything go faster and that makes everything easier. Which is better, the 1886 with Determined or the Diamondback? Because of all of the Diamondback's conditions and its faults, 
I would say the 1886 would determined is better, but not for everything. If you want to kill multiple enemies at the same time, which is extremely useful, then you're going to need to run a crit build, not a headhunter build, because you wouldn't be marking targets, you'd be killing targets. In order to mark targets, you need to crit, not kill. Well, you need to crit, then kill. You still want to do things with as few shots as possible, and that's where the Diamondback comes in and all of its might. Wait, why wouldn't you just want to kill everybody with a single bullet? Why go for negotiators and crits? So even though you can kill three targets at the same time, isn't that just as fast, if not faster, to just kill three targets with a single bullet instead of killing three targets with multiple shots? So you would need three shots to mark all three targets and then at least one additional shot to kill all three targets, if not two, but most likely two. So you'd be at five total shots to kill three targets, where if you're running Headhunter and you were chain killing, we'd only need three bullets to kill three targets, which you could probably do faster. You bring up a really good point, and here's the answer. Not every faction or difficulty level is going to be optimal for a Headhunter rifle build. Now let's just throw snipers out of the equation. Okay, there's something different. We're focused on rifles. So solo heroic open world content, a Headhunter determined 1886 rifle build, great. One shot kill everything. If you're fighting the hyenas, going for their heads is really annoying because they're always hopping around. They literally hop instead of walk. Or they send those crazy rusher ladies at you, which zig and zag. So some factions, you might prefer to run a multi-shot crit build and a negotiators one would be great against the hyenas. And you only have five rounds on an 1886 or eight with the diamond back. If you're not good at landing headshots, then you're in reload hell. Or if you love running rifles and play legendary content, then it's very difficult the chain kill in legendary content even with the 1886 especially if you're running in a group which most people do when they're playing legendary so that difficulty level is going to require multiple shots to kill enemies thus crit based builds are ideal so now that we got that out of the way it's time to get into the tips and tricks or the things to look out for I'm calling this section the tips and tricks section, but it's also a beware section of the Diamondback because it can get you in trouble. So consider this a heads up. When you're kicking off the fight, there's sort of a bug in the rifle. Hold everything. Did you say there's a bug in the Division 2 that the devs haven't fixed? No way. When you're inside 20 meters, Snakebite's gonna pick a target for you. If you reload, you can select a different target. One example where you would wanna do this is if the target that it marks is hiding behind cover and you don't actually have a shot on them anyways. So the base mag is eight and for some reason, it's not allowing me to put a ninth shot in the chamber. It's not letting me do it on some rifles and on some rifles it is. Like I can do it on the merciless but either way when you swap weapons and you swap back that round is gone which is also a bug yeah so it's not letting me put a ninth round in this which is really annoying because that would be helpful especially for this scenario so the only way to get to that target is by dispensing around and then reloading but because that target is too far it's going to randomly mark any target inside 20 meters so if that's the most critical target and you want to hit him first so you can mark him it's not going to be an option you got to get inside 20 meters but another way to do it is just to rotate weapons so if you switch weapons and you switch back to the diamond back then it'll mark a different target now this doesn't always work. Sometimes it'll remark the same target, but if you wanna maintain your stealth, it's worth a shot. Okay, let's talk about tactical reloads in the 1886, which the Diamondback is built on. You can reload a single round at a time as needed, which prevents you from getting to the very bottom of your mag. So I can kill, reload, and as I'm looking for my next kill, I can reload as I'm acquiring that target. Don't want to do that with the diamond back. The reason why is because it's going to randomly mark targets every time you reload, and that's going to make it really hard to track who your target is. Another thing you're going to want to be aware of is when a new group of enemies spawn in on you and they're coming from outside of 20 meters, which happens a lot, by the way. Once they enter the boundary, there's a little bit of a delay on who it's going to mark, requiring some patience out of you before you take that shot. Here's a tip for this negotiator's build specifically. So what you want to do is hit your mark and then ignore him so to speak have confidence that you're going to be able to take that target down even if it's a boss by spreading the damage around to his friends so now that you have your guaranteed crits mark the other targets around him and then watch them all die at the same time that's how negotiators works and that's how you want to play with this setup one way to look at it is with this negotiators build you're basically getting three times more out of your mag you can run a shield with this build if you want just because you're running braced doesn't mean you have to to stay in cover. 
You can just pop in cover to reload. And even if you're not done reloading, you can leave cover and get a partial benefit from that braced stat. Here's another benefit. If you're fighting the Black Tusk and you have your guaranteed crit, make sure you hit one of their tanks or warhounds. Those big targets make it really easy for you to focus fire on and eliminate the other marked targets you have super fast and easy because you're missing less. The downside of fighting the Tusks are the drones, but the Diamondback often will select incoming explosive drones or the decoy spotter drones from the snipers. And those are painful to shoot with the 1886 because you just don't have a ton of rounds and they're there to get you to miss. I totally recommend letting the enemies come to you if you can. You want them to sort of flow in linearly. If you play too aggressive with this weapon and you have enemies on all sides of you, the Diamondback can mark enemies that aren't in your line of sight, but are in range. That makes it extremely difficult to manage your damage. Okay, here's the deal. So even with Braced, I feel like there's a ton of reload time in your gameplay. And in those really intense moments, it does get you in trouble. I honestly just can't imagine using this weapon without Braced. And even then, I think it needs a faster reload. I feel like the dev didn't really think this one through. The Division 2. If you found this video helpful, subscribe, like, and turn on notifications to ensure you don't miss out on the fantastic experiences waiting for you in The Division 2. And if you like builds like this, check out the recommended build video I have here for you. If you have anything you want to see covered, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And thank you to all the channel members and donors who make everything possible. Tux Nation wouldn't be without you. When you buy a game from Ubisoft, enter the creator code Tuxedo Bandito to support the channel. Easy peasy. Follow me. I get it.